the souls of the saints are rejoicing in heaven, the saints who follow the footsteps of Christ. And since for love of him they shed their blood, they now exalted Christ forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in your wonderful providence have strengthened your church through the confession of the martyrs, St. Augustine, Zhao, and companions, grant that your people, faithful to the mission entrusted to it, may enjoy ever greater freedom and witness to the truth before the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. Israel set out with all that was his. When he arrived at Beersheba, he offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. There God, speaking to Israel in a vision by night, called, Jacob, Jacob. He answered, Here I am. Then he said, I am God, the God of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for there I will make you a great nation. Not only will I go down to Egypt with you, I will also bring you back here after Joseph has closed your eyes. So Jacob departed from Beersheba, and the sons of Israel put their father and their wives and children on the wagons that Pharaoh had sent for his transport. They took with them their livestock and the possessions they had acquired in the land of Canaan. Thus Jacob and all his descendants migrated to Egypt, his sons and his grandsons, his daughters and his granddaughters, all his descendants he took with him to Egypt. Israel had sent Judah ahead to Joseph so that he might meet him in Goshen. On his arrival in the region of Goshen, Joseph hitched the horses to his chariot and rode to meet his father Israel in Goshen. As soon as Joseph saw him, he flung himself on his neck and wept a long time in his arms. And Israel said to Joseph, at last I can die, now that I have seen for myself that Joseph is still alive. The word of the Lord. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Trust in the Lord and do good, that you may dwell in the land and be fed in security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will grant you your heart's requests. The Lord watches over the lives of the wholehearted. Their inheritance lasts forever. They are not put to shame in an evil time. In days of famine, they have plenty. Turn from evil and do good, that you may abide forever. For the Lord loves what is right and forsakes not his faithful ones. The salvation of the just is from the Lord. He is their refuge in time of distress, and the Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them, because they take refuge in him. Hallelujah. 
the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you to all truth and remind you of all I told you. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, Behold, I am sending you like sheep in the midst of wolves. So be shrewd as serpents and simple as doves. But be aware of men, for they will hand you over to courts and scourge you in their synagogues. And you will be led before governors and kings for my sake as a witness before them and the pagans. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. You will be given at that moment what you are to say. For it will not be you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will hand over brother to death, and father his child. Children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by all because of my name. But whoever endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to another. Amen, I say to you, you will not finish the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. So this week, in our first reading, we've been going through the history of Israel. And today we finally come to the culmination where Jacob has taken all his family to Egypt. They've gone through the seven-year famine, and he's, they're going to be saved because of what the brothers did to Joseph. But I found it interesting that today, I was wondering what was J Jacob thinking of, because God came to him when they were at the bottom of, of Beersheba, and he said, be not afraid. Don't be afraid to go to Egypt. You, you'll be fine there. You're going to become a great nation. And it went from 70 people to over 400,000 people by the time Moses came. So what was he afraid of? If you think about it, he was afraid probably of the unknown. Going into a nation he had no idea what it was, what it was going to be like. Uh, leaving the nation, the land that it was promised, they finally made it there, the promised land. And just that facing... Uh, the unknown. He's at the end of his life. He's wondering, is Joseph really alive? And we saw at the end, they were finally reunited. And today's, in the, in the gospel today, and, and this week, we've been going through the final stages of the apostles' training. So we, weeks ago, we went through the Sermon on the Mountain. That was the theory. He gave him the theory. Then we went through two chapters of healings. There was ten healings of all kinds. Healing the blind, the, the leper, the, uh, uh, raising the dead. And he's, he's at this last phase here where he's saying, okay, it's time for you guys to go out and practice what I've, what I've shown you, what I've told you. And at this last stage, and he's told, you know, you're going to go do what I just did. I gave you authority over, over demons. And he's warning this last thing. He said, some will accept you, but many will not. In fact, he says, not if, but when they, they hand you over. Or when they persecute you. So he's telling them, this is going to happen. This is not going to be an easy road. And in fact, he says, it's gonna, you're going to be before the synagogues, the Jews, their fellow Jews, the, the governors and the kings, the pagans. And even your family is going to turn against you. He says, you will be hated by all because of my name. I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound like encouraging you to go out and start your ministry. They're all going to hate you. It's kind of, you're going to say Genevieve, they're all going to hate you. It wouldn't would look, look good coming, but what he's telling them is, you need to trust me, because he says, don't even worry when they put you in front of the, these, these trials. I will, your Father will speak through you. The Spirit that lives in you will speak through you, give you what you need to say when you need to say it. And this is not a popularity contest. We're, we're all called to proclaim the gospel, to make disciples of all nations. And they're going to hate us because we're challenging the, the common way. We're challenging the way people live because we want a better way. We want them to be able to make it to heaven. And today, we also celebrate 
the saint, the, the martyr saints of China, Saint Augustine Zoa, and his 119 companions. They were hated by all. In fact, their ages ranged from uh, nine to 72. They were natives, they were foreign ministers, minist missionaries. There was children, parents, catechists, labor laborers, priests. And Saint Augustine, the main name saint here, he witnessed a bishop, he was a soldier, and he witnessed a bishop being martyred. And he was so moved by his courage that he immediately wanted to become baptized. And not long after became a priest. And in 1815, he was martyred. Now these martyrdoms took place between 1648 and 1930. So it was a wide stretch of, of time. But in, in uh, October 1st, John Paul II canonized all 120 of them. So I think what we need to learn from these Gospels, we, we need to learn from Jacob and his courage. He says, be not, afra be not afraid to go forward. We need to learn from the apostles who went forward and said, be not afraid. And the saints, that they were willing to lay down their life for God and for the, for the Gospel. So I would say that let us go like sheep among wolves and let us not be afraid to proclaim the kingdom of God is at hand. Confident that God understands our weakness, we bring our prayers and needs to Him today. For all church leaders, may the Lord inspire them with love and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, oppressed by addiction or in need, may they find Christ in Christ the strength to persevere and overcome. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, May they enter into eternal life with God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. In silence, let us offer our intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That through the intercession of Our Lady of Brown Sucker, that we will be spared the loss of life and property during this hurricane season. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we trust in your mercy and ask that you answer our prayers for the good of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, Holy Father, the offerings we bring in commemoration of the holy martyrs, and grant that we, your servants, may be found steadfast in confessing your name. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, a duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyrs, Augustine, Zhao, and companions, 
poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Shelton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God,
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room, but only say the word that my soul shall be healed. To those joining us from social media, please pray with me an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. O God, who in your holy martyrs have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, graciously grant that drawing strength from this sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Remember, our most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. 
inspired by this confidence, I fly into thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petition, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. 